What's up everybody? Today we're going to be going over how to swap the V8 WJ power steering pump into your Jeep Cherokee. I'll say right off the bat, I've already done this swap and I didn't film it the first time, but uh, I'm about to do it again because the first pump I bought is no good and we'll go over why that is. But we're going to do it again. All the steps are exactly the same whether or not you're starting off with the, the pump already or you've got the original pump in. Um, I'm going to talk about whatever you have to switch around and swap around. But I will also say, it's an awesome swap. I've had it on for, I don't know, maybe a couple months now. My main issue is that this, this pump I have isn't bleeding right, so I've got air in the system. There's a leak or something in the pump reservoir. So when I come to a stop, I lose some power steering. But under, under power and, and when it's working correctly, steers awesome. I do have it combined with a Durango steering box. So... You know, keep that in mind. I don't know exactly how much of an improvement it's going to be when you're using the stock box. It will be an improvement, I know that, but I don't know how much of an improvement. But um, this V8 pump combined with my uh, Durango steering box is awesome. Um, I've only got 31s, but um, before steering was really, I really had to wrestle it because it was so worn out. And I was also all over the road, you know, it liked to wander a lot because there was so much play in the steering box. None of that is happening anymore and I can steer uh, super easily with one finger. It's really awesome, so let's get into it. My dog keeps stealing all my stuff while I'm trying to make this video. All right guys, we're at the Jeep now, and we're gonna be talking about upgrading your stock XJ steering pump to the V8 WJ steering pump. I'm gonna talk about my experience doing it. We're gonna do it together, because I have to do it again, and we'll talk about why. I'm gonna talk about you know what you need to know as far as getting your own steering pump, which one to get, and as far as I know, this is the only video out there right now of someone actually doing this swap. There's plenty of write-ups on it on the forums, but this should give you guys a good idea of what it actually looks like to do it. So here's my steering box. This is the power steering pump off of a 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a V8 already installed. Now I mentioned before that I have to install it again because this pump is defective. Um, I'll explain the issue that I'm having with the pump later. But the first thing you guys have to understand is which Grand Cherokee you're taking your steering pump off of. Now, I made a mistake the first time. Uh, I didn't do enough reading. I went all the way to the junkyard, which for me is a two-hour drive. Me and my friend went out there, and I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to grab, so I was a little distracted when it came to grabbing the steering pump. But uh, I found a Jeep Grand Cherokee. It was a 2001. The steering pump looked great. It looked new. Uh, I pulled it, brought it home, and realized that I had taken the steering pump off of a straight six engine WJ, which is a mistake. That is the exact same steering pump that you have in your stock XJ. What you need is the steering pump off of a V8 WJ. That's the important part. It needs to be a V8 because that has a different steering pump in it, the higher flow steering pump. So that was a bust. I had to basically throw that one out because I didn't want to drive all the way out there again. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy a new one. So I went to Rock Auto. So I was able to find this 2002 steering pump for about 170 bucks, brand new. I got this from Lairs. Now this is the important part. If you guys are going to buy a new pump, I recommend getting yours from Lairs. Lairs is an American company. They have awesome customer service, no question warranty. They helped me a lot when I was trying to troubleshoot the problems that I was having, which pretty sure are my fault, but we'll see when we replace it. Um, buy from Lairs. Do not buy from AC Delco. It's remanufactured. It's garbage. If you read the forums, everyone says how many issues they have. Before I smartened up and realized that AC Delco wasn't the best uh, place to get your steering components from, I bought an AC Delco steering box for a Durango. So that's a Durango box down there. I have had zero problems with it, I will say that right now. So, I, you know, maybe I got lucky because a lot of people said when it comes to steering boxes, they are just, they're not good. Uh, I got that from Summit, but it is an AC Delco reman. No problems, but again, just a warning. From what I've read on the forums, don't go with the AC Delco steering pump if you're going to buy a new one or a reman. This is a brand new Lairs Made in America, power steering pump, and again, their customer service is awesome, so highly recommend it. Now, I don't remember offhand the exact year that you need to get for uh, for this pump. I'm fairly certain that the V8 WJ pump you want is 2001 to 2004. Um, you should probably double check me on that. But uh, this is a 2002. The reason I got the 2002 is because um, out of all the pumps that Rock Auto had for sale, 2002 is the only year where they offered the Lairs pump, and I wanted the Lairs pump. So, 2002, Rock Auto, Lairs pump, recommend it. Um, or pull it from a junkyard and do it right the first time. Unlike me. So, a couple things you need to know before you put this in. Um, one thing I saw online that there was a little bit of a debate about is the high-pressure hose fitting. 
Now that's this guy right in here. This is the fitting we're talking about. This hose is threaded into. You have to take the fitting out of your stock pump and put it in the WJ pump because your stock XJ hoses will not thread into the new um, WJ fitting. So you put your stock one in the new power steering pump. It's not hard to do at all. However, the debate is there's an orifice inside of that fitting. The fitting that the WJ pump comes with is much larger than the orifice in the fitting that's on your XJ pump. Now some people said, I'm running this pump, I didn't drill out the fitting, I have the original XJ fitting in there, it runs great, no problems. Other people say, I couldn't get this thing to run right um, steering wise until I drilled that fitting out. I was having all sorts of weird issues and sounds and stuff. From what I saw, it goes either way online. So I drilled mine out, I didn't even try it without drilling it out, I just went ahead and drilled it out. So I can't speak to whether or not you need to. But, um, but I drilled mine out and I don't seem to have any problems related to that. So I would recommend you do it. It's really easy. Now the other thing is, the only difference between this pump and your stock pump is that if you look under here, the reservoir for this pump has a third, what I'm guessing was the uh, return for the hydraulic fan on the WJ. Alright guys, so I'm going to pause this video right here to address the huge mistake that I made so that you guys don't make the same mistake. You see right there, that is the return line. For the power steering box that is not the auxiliary return line for the fan like i thought it was that is the return where you need to hook up your pump the reason that i didn't do this initially is because the power steering line the return line for the uh, xj doesn't fit on that fitting but it does fit on the smaller fitting slightly higher up on the reservoir so i automatically assumed that that was the right fitting and it never occurred to me that, that maybe the issues i was having is because i had the return hooked up to the wrong port and that was 100% the problem. I'm recording this now after this project is done. Um, and for the rest of this video, until the end, I, I don't know that this is the, <laughs> the problem that I was having. So you're going to see me hook it up wrong again. But just know you have to hook up your power steering box return to that large port on the bottom. It doesn't fit right away. I had to make an adapter um, using some barb fittings from the hardware store. Uh, but that's how you have to do it to get everything to work right. It's basically a port down there that you have to plug up. Now that blue cap on that, that, that blue cap I have on that, that actually came with the new pump. I'll show you guys the new pump right here. The new pump comes with a cap on it. So all I did was put a hose clamp around that cap to close it off. However, now that worked fine for several months, but as you guys can see, it just started to have a little bit of a leak. So this time around, maybe I'll do the same thing and use some RTV, maybe I'll use a piece of hose, I'm not sure, but um, it was never a bad leak. You can just see it's starting to wet there and it is dripping down that hose just a tiny bit. But that's basically it. Other than that, everything bolts in the exact same way. So uh, I'm going to take this out and I'll show you guys replacing the pulley, um, putting the pulley on the new pump and putting this pump back in. So another thing is, some people say you don't need to do the Durango box. Some people just upgrade to the WJ pump, and that gives them plenty of power. Now, I can't speak to that because I did the Durango box and the WJ pump at the same time. So I never actually had this WJ pump and my stock steering box. But my stock steering box was clapped out. It had way too much play in it, um, even after adjustment. So I, I decided to just replace it. So I've got the WJ pump and the Durango box. And I will say, this thing steers awesome. I've only got 31s on here. But um, before this upgrade, I, you know, I really had to wrestle the steering wheel just driving down the street. Now I can steer with one finger. You know, driving on the highway, it's awesome. I don't have a sore wrist after driving for hours. So I really do highly recommend the upgrade. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is get all of the fluid out of this reservoir. So I'm going to pop this cap off, put it over here. Some people recommend using a turkey baster to get it out. I just happen to have something better to get this out. So I'm going to use this brake bleeder I borrowed from a buddy of mine. Um, I'm just going to stick it right in there and it's going to be great for siphoning all of that fluid out. I'm not going to reuse the fluid because I'm still unsure if there's any damage to that pump. Maybe there could be some metal filings in there. Who knows? I don't see any. Um, the, the fluid looks good. It's so dark because I have royal purple in there. I know it's supposed to be clear, but it's dark purple. Um, the fluid looks good to me, but just to be sure, we're going to put all new fluid in it.
All right, guys, that should do it. You can see we got plenty of fluid out of there. We'll look at this fluid later just to make sure there's no, you know, metal shavings or anything nasty like that in it, but it looks fine to me so far. Um, one thing I am going to do is, before unhooking everything, I'm actually going to unhook the low-pressure hose and try to suck some more fluid through that hose just to hopefully get whatever fluid is remaining in the pump out so that when we undo this fitting, we don't just dump power steering fluid all over the ground. Um, so we'll see if that works out. I'm just going to pull that little hose clamp off with the spare channel locks and try to siphon through that hose. So guys, one thing I forgot to mention before doing this project, cover the ground. I'm working in my driveway. I've stained my driveway way, way too many times. Put some plastic down because inevitably there's gonna be some drips. So I'm just gonna cover the floor underneath the truck just in case with some plastic. So hopefully that catches any drips. If I know anything about working on a Jeep though, definitely gonna end up making a mess anyway, but you know, we tried. All right guys, so I suctioned out that hose a little bit. Hopefully that helps me not make a mess when I start pulling these uh, hoses off the pump, but we'll see. So the next thing I recommend doing is pulling the air box off. Just makes everything a lot easier. All right, so here's the air box. There's just two bolts to pull it out. So I'm gonna pull those out. We'll pull this off and we'll have easier access to the pump. Okay, so the air box is out. We have much better access now to our steering pump. Next thing I need to do is take out this electric fan. We're gonna need to get a ratchet in this way to get to these bolts. So this fan's gotta come out first. So we've got our electric fan out of the way. We've got plenty of room in here. Air box out of the way. So the next thing we can start doing is unthreading the high pressure line. This is a 5 8 fitting right here. This is a stock XJ hose, so it should be the same for yours. So before I fully unthread that, I'm gonna get a paper towel ready in case any Power steering fluid starts dripping out of there. Yep, so that's what I was talking about right there. I'm letting most of it drip into the pump. And it looks like we caught all of it, so that's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this in a paper towel so that I can move it out of the way. So there's our high pressure line out of the way. I'm just going to clean up whatever dripped down here. Did a really good job of making sure it didn't drip. So now all of our lines are disconnected from the pump. So the next thing we have to do is loosen the belt, pull this belt off, then we can start pulling the bolts out to disconnect the pump from the engine. All right, so there we have it. Now our belt is loose enough that we can slip it right off. There we go. So the next thing we gotta do is rotate this pulley so that these holes line up with the three bolts that we need to remove. So there's one here, there's one here, and there's one underneath. So you simply line this up. You can get your ratchet in there to get that bolt out. So this is gonna be a 13 millimeter socket. All right, you know what? This is taking forever, so um, I'll do a little magic. All right, so I got all the bolts out. 
once I pull this top one off, the whole pump's going to come out and we can start working on it on the workbench. Alright, so the next thing we're going to have to do is swap over the pulley from our old pump over to our new pump. I will say that this thing keeps continuing to leak fluid, so when you get it on your bench, just be careful. I got a couple paper towels stopping it up, but even after siphoning all the fluid out, there's a lot still in there. So, to get this pulley off, what I have here is a pulley puller and installer kit. So make sure that you guys get the kit from the auto parts store, unless you already have one. The first time I did this, I made the mistake of getting the normal pulley puller, which looks like this. When I use that on this pump, if you look close, let me see if I can do this without spilling fluid everywhere. If you look close, this pump is made of plastic, and only the center ring here is made of steel. So when you use that big pulley puller and you grab it on the plastic part, it just explodes. The pulley just breaks into a million pieces because it's it's flimsy. So this puller is designed to grab onto that middle metal uh, part and get that pulley off of there. So for the first time, I'm going to use this one and not, you know, that other one. And of course, I got fluid everywhere. So the way this tool works is, you take this part right here, and this is designed to fit right around that metal section in the middle of the pulley. I can't pull it off. This ring goes around to retain those two uh, metal pieces that are grabbing onto that pulley. So now this thing can't move. So the way this works is, you take these two metal pieces right here, you sit them on either side of your pulley, and then this is the actual puller. This big fat one right here. So what you would do is, back this down, and this flange on this bolt is actually going to sit inside. Got to bring it all the way down. It'll sit inside those two steel cups right there. You put your retaining ring over top, and now, this can't come off. So what's going to happen is, as we begin to twist this nut that's trapped inside of that collar, it's going to pull our pulley off of the power steering pump. So we're going to need two wrenches for this, one to hold back and one to actually twist. Just one thing to note, when you're putting this tool on, those two metal halves that you slide in there, um, one side of them is perfectly round and the other side is kind of oval. The oval side, if you can see there, is the side you want to put towards the top, otherwise it's not really going to sit right. Alright, there it is. So our pulley is now free of our pump. So I'm remembering now why I removed the reservoir off of the other off of this pump originally. It's because it's really hard to get a wrench around there. So I think I'm going to try to do a um, universal socket and put, get the impact on it because I really don't want to have to take the reservoir off the new one since I have a feeling that's the original problem I was having. So let's see if that works. I know you guys are going to judge me for using chromies on my impact, but you got to do what you got to do. Hopefully... Hopefully that'll work. Alright, that worked great. There it is. So again, that's the original XJ fitting. I've drilled it out, as you can see, pretty big. I've drilled it out to the exact size of the WJ uh, fitting. I, I don't remember exactly what that size is, but just stick a drill bit in the WJ fitting that it comes with um, and you'll figure out how big it's supposed to be. Alright, so now I'm just going to put the original XJ fitting into the WJ pump. So if you too are struggling trying to figure out how the hell to get this off without taking this reservoir off, I just came up with kind of a kind of a solution. I ended up just putting this 
crow's foot on the end of the impact and I was able to just just barely get it on there and then give it a couple ugga duggas to uh, break up break the bolt loose or break the fitting loose sorry so now I should be able to get that out very slowly just with an adjustable wrench So uh, yeah, I gave up on the adjustable pretty quickly. I'm just going to keep going out with the crow's foot little by little. Alright, so before you let go, there's a spring in there. So you don't want everything to shoot out. So I'm going to leave that spring exactly where it is. Here we've got our new fitting. And we're replacing that with our original fitting. Now you can see I've got them drilled out to the same diameter but one is much larger than the other so we need to use this to work with our hoses. So I'm going to insert that, push against that spring. Now what I'm actually going to make sure that there's just a little bit of power steering fluid on that o-ring, that rubber o-ring right there, just to make sure it seals good. Alright, so that is nice and tight. So the next thing I want to do is address this little cap here. So, we said with my old one, I had a hose clamp around that, but that didn't really seem to keep it from leaking. Alright, so while that's drying, we can go ahead and take our pulley and install it onto the new pump here. So we're going to remove the old ring and these keepers here, put these back. Sorry for the uh, weed whacker sound. Take this out, put it back. So when this new pump came, it had this bolt installed. This bolt has a washer and a nut on it. Um, this is what you would use to reinstall your pulley onto your pump. Um, basically how it works is, it's the opposite of the puller. You sit your pulley on top, you thread that bolt into the pulley, and then as you advance this nut, it'll push on that washer, which will push the pulley back onto the shaft. Now, I'm not going to use this, because the last time I did this, I tried using this guy, and there was so much force when you're trying to put that pulley back on that, it was just bending this washer. And I had, uh, I don't know, I had like three or four washers stacked on there. So, um, this is garbage. I'm going to use the reinstall tool that the kit came with. Which is this guy right here. I'm going to back that off and put our appropriate bolt on. Oh, it goes this way. And we'll see how this does. Hopefully this works a little better than the other one. Pulley there. Going to thread in our bolt. Now, always make sure when you're putting on the new pulley that that little lip there, the lip that we used to take it out, make sure that's facing out. If that's not facing out, you're going to have a hell of a time ever taking this off if you need to get it off again. Let's see how she does. much easier if I was using a ratchet, but I already got the adjustables out. Now, I'm just going to check to see how far we've gone. We're almost there. You can see there's just a little bit of a space. I'm going to leave it so that maybe there's about a sixteenth of an inch of space between the back of the pulley and the pump housing. Okay, so if you look in there, we got a nice sixteenth of an inch gap, more or less. I think that's going to be enough. So I'll take off my removal tool, or my, uh, sorry, my installation tool here. All 
All right, there it is. <clears throat> our pulley's nice and flush with our shaft there. Good clearance, not hitting anything. It's on there nice and tight. It's exactly what we want to see. So now we're ready to go put this back on the truck. So at this point, it's as simple as doing everything we just did, but uh, in reverse order to get it back on the truck. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, run these bolts back in, get this thing bolted back in place. All right, pump's bolted back in, so now we're gonna hook our lines back up. All right, so now we're just gonna put our belt back on. So I found that on an XJ, the uh, belt needs to be a little tighter than, than you'd think. Um, this seems good to me. I'm going to start it up once we're done. Uh, if it squeaks, I'll tighten it up even more. Alright, so our new pump is installed. Um, our lines are hooked up. Everything looks good. The only thing left we have to do now is to put our air box in, put back everything we took apart, put the fan back in, um, and then we can move on to the bleeding process. Alright guys, so we got our new pump installed. Now it's time to move on to the most important part of this whole process and that's going to be bleeding the air out of the power steering system. So to do this we're going to follow the manufacturer's recommendations that came with the pump. Alright, so according to layers, to bleed this thing we need to jack the front of the car up uh, disable the ignition system, so I'll be pulling out the fuel pump relay and the main spark plug wire. So it says to fill up the reservoir, crank the engine over for about 20 seconds, and while you're cranking it, uh, rotate the steering wheel back and forth, back and forth, until all the air comes out. So that should be all it takes to do this. It says do it about five times. Um, in my experience, it took way more than that last time but we'll see how this goes. Got some new power steering fluid here. So the fluid level is now at the top of the reservoir, but when I start to rotate the engine and turn the engine over with the key, it's going to start sucking that fluid back into the pump. So the fluid level is going to slowly go down, I'll fill it up, it'll go down, I'll fill up until it equalizes. So you can see here the reservoir spit up a little bit of fluid. That's just a big air bubble coming out. So. Not ideal that we spilled a little bit, but it means we're getting air out of the system, so that's good. So if we look in here, you guys can see in there, we have lots of bubbles. So that's what we want to see. That means we're getting all that air out. We've got to wait till they go away and then 
we'll keep repeating the process. All right, we still got some bubbles, so I'm gonna hook up the jump pack just so I don't roast my battery uh, trying to do this because the battery's getting a little low. Okay, that should be the fourth time we've gone lock to lock. So we're still getting some bubbles. So it said do it five times. I would imagine it might take a couple more than five, but we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so long story short, uh, I'm having the same problem that I was having with my old pump. So, since I have it hooked up the right way now, it took us two seconds to bleed the air out, and it's not whining at all. You know, what having it hooked up the other way had to do with so much air getting in the system, I really don't know. I don't know why that was, but this is the way to do it, and it, it's hooked up perfectly now. We have no problems, so don't make that mistake. Make sure you hook it up to the right port. So here we go. Here's the plug I made for the return. It's just a piece of tubing bent over. Now, if you look down in here, that larger port at the bottom is where you need to hook your return to. So the hose I had was actually a little too small to fit on the barb that comes out of the reservoir. So I had to go to the hardware store, just get a little barb adapter and a larger piece of hose. So I adapted it right there. I had to cut the hose way short also. All right, so there you have it. Jeep Cherokee WJ steering pump swap done again. Don't make the mistake I made. Hook up the return the right way. It took way too long for me to find this answer online. Um, I should have thought of it myself, admittedly, but for some reason, no one's writing about it. Make sure you hook up to the right return port or else it's not gonna work right. No more wine, baby. Yeah, hell yeah.